Before undertaking a cranial ultrasound scan, it is important to know why it is you're doing one. Here is a list of some possible indications. Preparation is quick and simple. This is a list of a few things to do prior to starting the procedure. Put sterile gel in your transducer probe, attach your cover, then put a further thin layer of gel on top of the cover. Place the transducer on the anterior fontanelle with the circular ridge to the baby's right side. This will then correspond to the left hand side of your screen. Start by taking images of your coronal views. C1, you can see here, is the most anterior view that you will obtain. It takes a slice of an image through the frontal lobes in which you can see your interhemispheric fissure and your orbital ridge. Next, Angle your transducer back, ensuring you can see both sylvian fissures on the lateral aspects of the image and the interhemispheric fissure in the centre. This ensures that your image is symmetrical. Here you will obtain image C2, which is the anterior horns of the lateral ventricles. The cavum septum pellucidum sits between these lateral ventricles. They and the lateral ventricles are often larger in preterm infants than in term infants. The next image you want to obtain is C3, the third ventricle. This can be found under the cavum septum pellucidum. It is often small and can therefore be difficult to see. In a symmetrical view of this plane of the third ventricle, a ventricular index can be measured. This is the distance from the interhemispheric fissure to the wall of the lateral ventricle. This should be plotted accordingly for the corrected gestational age. Values more than four millimetres above the 97th centile are indicative of significant ventricular dilatation. C4 is an image through the trigones. This is the posterior horn or the floor of the lateral ventricles and here is where the choroid plexus sits. A small choroid plexus haemorrhage can be difficult to differentiate from a bulky choroid. The final coronal view, C5, is of the occipital cortex. In this plane, when the white matter surrounding the lateral ventricles appears bright or eco-dense, this is referred to as periventricular flare. The next views we want to obtain are the sagittal views. To do so, turn your transducer through 90 degrees so that the circular notch is towards the baby's face. Always start by first obtaining your midline sagittal view. This is a good reference point to ensure that you're in line. In the centre you can see the dark image is your cavum septum pellucidum, above this your corpus callosum and below this your third ventricle, your fourth ventricle and to the back slightly your ecobright cerebellum. By angling your probe slightly right or left, you will get the right or left angled parasagittal view, S2. The crescent lateral ventricle is a landmark for this view. You can see the bright choroid plexus in the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. And at the top of this, you can see where it tucks up into the caudothalamic notch. S3, the tangelital parasagittal view, is obtained by further angulation of the transducer. This shows the deep matter surrounding the lateral ventricles. The ecobright sylvian fissure is the landmark for this view. Vermont Oxford network grading system can be used to grade 
periventricular hemorrhages. However, in our neonatal unit, we prefer to accompany this with a full written description of findings. This is our cranial ultrasound schedule used in the Royal Jubilee Maternity Services in Belfast. These may vary slightly depending on the department in which you work in.